Hello and welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about water purification. Now, so this is what it says in your specs. So the first one, first thing you need to know about is the composition of water in natural water supplies, is, including dissolved gases, ions, microorganisms, and pollutants. And then, so we're just going to go through this today. So there we go. Composition of water in natural water supplies. Okay, so natural water, we've got to break it down, is essentially it's from rivers and lakes. It's from a natural source of water. And as the water runs through the earth, it then, as it says there, it dissolves other substances, mainly coming from rocks. Then when dissolved in water, forms ions. So you need to know about what ions are actually found in natural water. So I've highlighted them for you there and the formula with them. So you get sodium, calcium, magnesium, the sulfate ion, the chloride ion, and the hydrogen carbon ion, as it says there. Along with the ions, you get dissolved gases, which are, as I've highlighted there, oxygen and carbon dioxide. And there are also some harmful microorganisms in the water as well. So they obviously need to be taken out so that diseases aren't present in our normal drinking water. And then finally, similarly with the microorganisms, you get some pollutants. So in agriculture, you have pesticides, which you use to treat your crops so that animals don't, don't eat them and destroy it. And then, of course, animal waste as well. All right. Next slide is about the need for sustainable water supply to include reducing our water consumption. So as you can see from the graph on the left, this by the way, taken from BBC Bite Size, I've linked it there. So as you can see, if you're looking at the purple one, is the world, it's, it's going up. And that's predicted to continue to go up. So we need to cut it down. We need to stop wasting water because water is critical from our life. So a couple of ways you can do that is short showers instead of long, longer showers and um, Baths, if you've got multiple people, get using the same bath water, fine. And um, yeah, it's just been about being economical with, with your water usage. So as it says there, instead of using your hose to water your garden, use some bath or sink water that you've already used. And yeah. And then what we also need to know about is the need for the, reducing the environmental impact of abstracting, distributing and treating water. So the abstraction water first abstraction of water is when water from natural sources is gained for human use and then some of the methods that we do that in include pumping water from underground building dams and creating reservoirs taking water from rivers slash lakes collecting rainwater and desalination which i'll get onto later um problems a couple of problems with these the reservoirs as it says there are they completely destroy habitats and they're massive I don't know if you've seen any reservoirs around you, but there's got a massive great wall to hold all this water in. So they completely change the landscape of the surrounding area. And then obviously, once we have the water there, we want the water all across the country. So therefore, to do that, we then have to pipe the water from the, from the source, which obviously is expensive, which is why water is such a problem in poor countries, because they don't have the money to then pump it from the source to to distribute it around the country for crops drinking water and for sanitation and then so how we treat the water you also need to know about so treatment of public water you, there are three main ways that you treat water first one is sedimentation so as you can see here what it is it's a big tank where it, the larger um, bits of set sediment from the water just sink to the bottom and the clean water's at the top through there. And then once you've got the semi-clean water, it then goes through fine filter to catch any of the really fine sediment in there. And then as it says there, it gets, gets rid of the sand and gravel. And then that trickles through to where the chlorination happens, where this, this is to kill the microorganisms that I talked about earlier, about which contaminate the water. And then finally, it's then just stored in, in a big tank and then can be tapped off wherever you need it. Again, diagram from bite size uh, is brilliant for it. And then here's, a, here's another bit you need to know about. So the arguments for and against the fluoridation of the water supply in order to prevent tooth decay. Um, so the arguments for fluoridation is it does alter the structure of the ena enamel so that the enamel essentially protects the tooth. So you want to have a really strong enamel so that you don't, when you're eating, acidic foods like oranges or anything like that 
or anything with sugar, you want the enamel to be strong so it doesn't corrode the tooth. And then what it also says there is low levels of fluoride increase the rate of remineralization as well, which is important. And then also fluoridation, again, similar to the developing enamel, it reduced the ability of plaque to form acid, which then would dissolve your teeth. Now, against, against fluoridation, there is a couple of cases where if you've got uh, high fluor fluoride levels, they can cause dental fluorosis, which then you form white patches on the surface of the enamel and that's not healthy. And then also what says that high fluoride intake can also cause health problems such as stomach cancer and infertility. Again, don't want that. If we can avoid it, that's really helpful. And then finally, water fluoridation decreases levels of tooth decay in children on top of fluoride being present in toothpaste, although the reason for this hasn't been found. And then finally, we can touch on the desalination of seawater um, to then turn it into drinking water as well. So as you can see here, seawater is, is heated. Uh, it's then passed through a tube, which then is then cooled. So then the water is, is gas, steam in here, and then it's cooled to form water there. And in doing so, you just leave the salt in the bottom of this because salt has a very high boiling point, whereas water as probably most of you know, boils at 100 degrees. So if you just heat it there, the salt's left at the bottom and you get very fresh and clean water ready to be drunk. Also a couple of things, the sustainability bit. If you saw there, it takes to do it on a large industrial scale, it's gonna be really quite expensive. So it also uses a lot of energy to heat up a lot of water as well, which increases the energy demand and considering global warming we want to decrease the amount of energy we needing to use to get drinking water and also increased energy demand means that it produces greenhouse gases which again contributes to global warming which is something we want to avoid and then it says that salty water produced by membrane des desalination is a pollutant and must be disposed of carefully so all the stuff in how you get the seawater into there um, the apparatus used for that is is polluting water which again you don't want to be creating pollutants when you're treating water and then finally desalination plants are needed to be by the coast because obviously you need the source of the salt water that you're treating and it's much easier if you have that on the coast but then obviously you have that benefit but then you want water from all areas of the country rather than just at the coast which means you then have to build the pipes which are very expensive